Hey, welcome to Tell Me How You're Mighty. It's a special edition this week. Today we're going to be discussing Valentine's Day. Love it, hate it, enjoy the chocolate. What are your feelings about this day? We have a little tradition on the Chump Lady blog of submitting verse dedicated to our cheating exes as either haikus or limericks. And so today, Sarah and I will be reading some submissions that we've got and a few that were voicemail messages. So Sarah, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Now, this is an opportunity for all kinds of cheating individuals to show how romantic they are and to go off on scurrilous secret shenanigans, <laughs> of candlelight potentially. And I would imagine as well as it being a period of joy for cheaters, it can be a tricky period because you've got your juggling act. If you've got yeah. one affair partner on the go, your wife, your husband at home, your other half, it's going to be tricky, isn't it? How do you divide your magnificent self into two? And, <laughs> or three and, or four. And declare, yeah, and declare your love to, to all these people in your life. Well, you know, sometimes that can be tricky. I would imagine Valentine's Day, a bit like Christmas, is the time when some of these un, uh, these affairs are unearthed. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, do you have any horrible Valentine's Day stories? I will share mine later. But I, I, I am a bit sappy for the holiday. I confess. I like the arts and crafts part of it. But well, I've, I've got to, I've got one that that was just lovely that happened last year, and I don't I still don't know who sent these, but I was uh, I was sent a. a the most beautiful bouquet of flowers at the Aww. radio station where I work. And it just had on the card, you're lovely. And that was it. Aww. Nothing else. I don't know who sent that, <laughs> but it just made me feel so. So I can be as cynical as I like about Valentine's Day, but that made my day and made me think, well, there's someone out there. I don't know who that, that, that thinks I'm lovely. So thank you very much. Uh, but I do think that the first Valentine's Day after you've been married is a special one. You know, yeah. you've been through the wedding, you've, you've professed your love in front of all your friends and family. Um, what better way to celebrate than your first Valentine's Day and to, and to make that really special? And that's what I thought I would do for my ex-husband. So we'd spent the money on the wedding. It had got more expensive than we thought. It had been a lovely day. But the one thing where we had uh, saved on was the wedding rings. So I still had my mother's old wedding ring. My um, my ex-husband had just a very cheap wedding ring that had been bought for next to nothing. And so I thought, I know what I'll do. I will track down a really special wedding ring. And his grandfather Aww. had had a 1930s wedding ring, which he, he sometimes talked about. So I thought, right, I'm going to find a 1930s wedding ring, got his finger size, uh, produced it with great flourish, and I thought, oh, and it's not about, you know, they always say it's not about the receiving, it, the, the the giving or the receiving. It's it's all about, you know, wanting to to make someone feel loved. Yeah. But sadly, it wasn't really terribly reciprocal because I got presented, well, more like hurled at me, really, a <laughs> bar of chocolate. <laughs> that was it. Hurled at you? That was it. Oh, my God. Just, like, well, there we are. There's yours. I was like, oh, thanks. And it was just the fact that no thought, I, I wasn't expecting an expensive present. I really wasn't. It would have been nice that if there had been a little tiny bit of thought, you know, maybe a meal cooked. You are a nice. very good person to not hurl that chocolate bar back at him, at his head. I mean, was he embarrassed? I mean, of course not, because he's a fuckwit, but... Oh, actually, we laughed about it. Uh, oh. I, I, I took it as comedy amusement. And actually, it wasn't really. It was It oh. was maybe, you know, you often talk about red flags. Maybe this was a red flag, that lack of thought that had gone into it. Oh, I, I, and, and also, it's like a bar of chocolate, not even a box of chocolate, oh. not even a heart-shaped box, like something you could buy at the gas station or the petrol station. Like that, the lowest common denominator of chocolate. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a triumphant Valentine moment. What kind and of chocolate was it? Well, it was Cadbury's Dairy Milk, which actually I do quite like. But okay. you know, I could go to the shop and I could buy that myself any any time, any day, and I, it would have just been nice, as you say, to put a little tiny bit of thought into it. Yeah. Well, my red flag Valentine's Day story is when I was dating my cheating ex, and I'm laughing because I was so stupid in retrospect, but, you know, I, I think I just, I hadn't been dating him that long, but, you know, so it's a little bit awkward, you know, what are you going to do? But I, I did believe foolishly that I was dating him exclusively. It had been a few months and um, he wanted to celebrate the day before Valentine's Day. And that should have been a red flag because who's busy on Valentine's Day? 
but I thought, you know, we're professional people. We have busy lives. <laughs> Things get scheduled, you know, I don't, so I didn't think about it real hard, but he came over and gave me a bouquet of carnations, which I have to say, I hate carnations. And I think that they are the cheapest, they just telegraph. I don't care. And I'm making no effort. They are trash flowers. I'm sorry, carnations, but that's, that's how I feel about it. Isn't that funny? I feel exactly the same about carnations as well. I don't know what they've done to deserve it, but there is something about <laughs> carnations that says lack of effort. Yeah. I don't know why. I just don't know why, but I feel like it's, and they're normally accompanied by something look, that looks a bit grey and depressed and on its way out in a in a very sort of cheap and nasty wrapping as well. Yeah. And they, they live, I think they're like the cockroaches of flowers. They live forever. So that's why they're sold in gas stations and, and, and also in garish colours. Like they come in green and blue and you know, unnatural. They put dyes in them. I don't know. Poor carnations. But yeah, they're, they really mean you have not thought this through at all, or you don't like the person. And maybe it's like a subtle dig, like carnations, like here's a carnation. I think, I think what it is, is the lack of effort. You know, I had the chocolate, you had the carnations and neither of those, if anyone had known us would realize that they're not going to be presents that are going to be received with a great deal of joy and skipping around in a romantic fashion. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess we should be grateful that we got a kibble at all, you know, that, I mean, and that's probably how they feel like, Hey, I went to all the effort to buy you a dairy milk chocolate. So be grateful. And it is his right and due to get a fabulously lovely gift from you. I, yeah. It just shows their mindset, it's, I guess. It's, it's, well, well, the thing is though, it's not the gift, is it? We're just lucky to have their magnificence in our lives. <laughs> Um, and I would imagine that's the thought that runs through their mind. They don't need to make an effort with Valentine's Day presents or cards or the rest of it because we have them and they're yeah. the prize. Um, they're something we should be very grateful and happy to have. So, you know, you moaning about carnations, me moaning about chocolate. We've got them. We're lucky. We have them, right? That's the a gift. Of them. That's a the gift of them. That keeps the bit that somebody else hasn't got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think they have got them. That's the problem. Like everybody's got a little bit like they p get passed around like, like Valentine's, like, like carnations. I don't know. <laughs> they're, 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 um, yeah, they, no one is special. I think that's the thing when you're a cheater. No, no one is special. I, the, the other thing I don't, I have issues with Valentine's day and I have to say heads up. I, I am kind of sappy about all holidays. I love holidays. And, um, and Valentine's Day, though, I, I've always had mixed feelings about going back to middle school because it's a day that kind of reminds people that they're not coupled and there's a lot of smug coupleness about it. So here we have Galentine's Day, you know, we have different ways of celebrating or not celebrating or you do things with your kids, which I also enjoyed making Valentine's with my son. I like I enjoy glitter glue. But in middle school, getting back to carnations, they used to do this thing where as a fundraiser for something, you could buy your friend or your sweetheart or your someone you secretly admired, you could buy them a carnation and it would be presented in like the middle of geometry class. Like they would come in and they'd have a, somebody would have a bunch of carnations and they would go around the room and give them to the lucky recipients. So you had the haves and the have nots. And that's Valentine's day to me. That's like, that is awful. So basically what you have is you will have inevitably, you, you all have known who was going to get all the carnage. You, you'd have just known this, wouldn't you? There will, there'll be someone that will get five or six and there'll be the same people that get none whatsoever. Yeah, right. I think, I mean, it isn't life like that, but it's, it's kind of, yeah. Was it? A, I think everyone's supposed to be surprised like, oh, a carnation for me, you know, and, and I was always a wallflower. I never got a carnation. And I suspect some people bought themselves carnations just to not be on team loser, you know, with the, the people who didn't get them. But, but I, I, Valentine's day is, is yeah, there, there's a lot of smugness out there. I don't, I don't like that about it. But there is a lot of smugness, but there's also, you know, I, I'm a bit like you. I do love all these, these holidays and these events. And, uh, you know, if it's done well, it can be absolutely wonderful but it's also a really distressing time if that's the time like christmas a lot of affairs come to light valentine's day again is can be a difficult time for people to juggle their various affair partners partners <laughs> and right. this must be another time of year where where things come to light as that juggling becomes all that bit too tricky 
Yeah, I I don't well, okay. So here's a pro tip for all the chumps out there. If your cheater wants to do something on the day before Valentine's Day and not Valentine's Day, that's a tip off that there's some other Valentines you don't know about. But yeah, I, I think I suspect that affair partners get better gifts. They don't get the carnations because you know, you have to salt the minds, you have to you have to throw a bit more kibble at them because you, you want them to be a side dish and, and you know, you're always wooing and you're always goading people into the pick me dance. So I I think that they're not getting Cadbury milk chocolate. They're getting something better. That's I don't know. I just suspect. Although, although I remember reading an article, um, and this was a Christmas one where a woman found out her husband was having an affair when she opened um, some shoes on Christmas Day and they were the wrong size. And oh, she became yes. quickly aware that the reason they were the wrong size is because they hadn't been bought for her. They'd been bought <laughs> for the affair partner who had her size shoes. So sometimes they're not that original. Who buys shoes for somebody? I That's also kind of weird and a bit fetishy. I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Getting getting a getting the same or different gift is, shows that they are not original. They are not original, and I think they imagine being the person who gives two people in your life the same gift who don't know about each other. I mean, like, do they feel like international man of mystery? Do they do they feel super cool? You know, like I got two ladies. <laughs> they like the shoes. I'll get them. I mean, what are they? What's going on? What's going on in their heads? Um, Maybe it's the beginning of a uniform for your for the women <laughs> or in your life. Where you know the next thing it'll be an identical boiler suit for the pair of them to wear, so that you they can be quickly identified. Well, my a... mind was going to lingerie, not boiler suits, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's I, there's all sorts of things you share and yuck and ooh. <laughs> well, on the subject of ooh. Yuck. <laughs> I thought maybe we could read some of the um submissions that that we got here. Do you, do you want to read uh oh, you wanna... I love these. So let's okay. start. Go re with, read your favorite. With, with this is from Just Wondering. When he left for another work meeting, I found all of the proof of his cheating. I moved out that day. Why the hell would I stay? Now a lawyer is what he'll be needing. As a reader of Esther Perel, he joyfully spurned marriage hell. His children and wife and our nice, happy life can't compete with the cheap Jezebel. <laughs> you would leave someone with such poetic ability. Who oh, would no. ask someone who has got such a wonderful way with words? I, 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 extra points for rhyming Jezebel with Esther Perel. I, that's just, I think you won the contest right there. I, yeah, I know. Like we are top grade kibble. Like why would you? Why would you cheat on someone so poetic and clever? I don't know. <laughs> but yes, the work meeting. N nice to work that one in. That's that's always yes. Do they have a work meeting on Valentine's Day? Yeah. Here's your. Uh, I'll give you. An, I'll give you another one that I like. I think this is from from Jeff. Okay. She said she'd rather be alone, but cheated with my Canadian clone. She gave away thrills. That left me the bills. I am free and she'll never atone. <laughs> <That's really clever. laughs> that, that, that is an excellent one. <laughs> you must have favorites as well, Tracy. Come on, let's let's hear a couple from you. Okay. Well, okay. I I like this one that was sent by Joanne that was her punk rock song. I was in a punk rock band back in the day with my cheater. And I wrote a song about infidelity and there was a great screaming chorus, but I will say it in prose, let around by your dick. I want to puke. You make me sick. Get a life, get a clue. Fuck you. Fuck you. Okay. So this, this one, <laughs> I would have loved to have heard it as a punk rock song that uh led around by your dick you make me sick fuck you fuck you fuck you i mean can't you just imagine the clash or something singing this or sin vicious <laughs> i don't know I, I i love it it's not a valentine technically but... no it's not it's not going to be the soundtrack to those lovely candlelit valentine meals is it that particular offering 
Oh, it could be though. I mean, it could be like Gorilla Valentine's Warfare. You could play this. You could play that song. But yeah, yeah, we've got quite a lot of these. So let's let's hear another one of your favorites then. Okay, another one of my favorites. Uh, all right. Okay, this one is from UX World, and this is a little scandal um, that's going on here in the states between Amy Robach and T.J. Holmes that I've snarked about a lot. Um, they were two news readers for ABC News who were fired for their workplace affair and and have now rebranded themselves as podcasters and to, to show that love triumphs all and that you know they're together despite it all. Although there are cracks, there's drinking and they don't seem to like each other very much. Anyway, anyway, um, UX World has has created verse Valentine's verse about this. So once there was a fuckwit named Amy who uttered, you really can't blame me. Our ratings are sinking amidst all our drinking, but he's grown. He will never betray me. The tale of poor TJ is dotted with proof that his character spotted. The co humped him, then GMA dumped him, and now he spends all his days besotted. Oh, lovely. Lovely, a romantic tale in poetic form. Who could ask for more? Yeah, and the whole narrative arc with karma, karma you know, that you got humped and then you got dumped. That's, I, I, that is chef's kiss. Beautif- beautifully done. <laughs> would, um, would you like to read another? Let's have, a, let's have a, another look here. Oh, I like this one. Ms. Ms. Done with him. Um, my fuckwit thought he was coy. Found that stupid burner phone. Oh boy. I decided that day I was done with this play. Now my life is a ball of great joy. I like this as well, actually, that there's a there's there's often a triumphant, joyful end to these this poetry where you move on and life gets a lot better. Yes. I mean, they shall end on a positive note, shouldn't they? <laughs> because your life is so much better without these people. I yes. Well done, Mrs. Done with them. I like her name too, Ms. I should say, Ms. Done with, and burner phones. That could be a whole subject of a another podcast. Like they have to have their their secret spy gear, you know, to carry on their secret lives. Okay, well, I'm going to do Victoria's poem here. There once was a fat man named Bjorn. He had a wee little problem with porn, but it didn't end there. They filled up his lair with dozens of hookers, well worn. Another another charming tale, isn't it, in a poetic environment? You know, you just you just wonder what the what the full story behind this individual and his antics really is. Do you, do you think the hookers get Valentine's Day gifts? I mean, do they get bars of chocolate? And I, if you're paying for the whole girlfriend experience, do you have to like give your girlfriend air quotes gifts I, I i have so many questions i don't i'm sure some of these questions could potentially be answered i'm sure that there is an opportunity for some some good valentine's day stories to to come in sort of to add to this yes if you have a valentine's day story you know definitely leave us a message we want we want to hear them we definitely and we have some more uh that will be read that douche He played me like a putz. His gaslighting almost drove me nuts. Stupid me spent time with Esther Perel, wallowing in that rick shit she tried to sell. Me? Wish I'd kicked him in his nuts. We met on this date. I thought you were great. But now I know better. Don't send me a letter. You're not even worth my hate. Here's a poem from listener Lou Wren. There was a fuckwit named Steve, whose bullshit I used to believe. He traded for worse, his balls kept in her purse, his freedom he'll never retrieve. Here's a poem from listener FW Free 2023. It's so hard to be me. My wife just won't let me be. She says I'm unfaithful. She's downright hateful. Even my girlfriend will agree. Here's a poem from Recovering Hopium Addict. My cheater, he says he loves Jesus. 
yet somehow does just what he pleases. He can polish that turd, but I believe not a word. I listen no more to his wheezes. Here's a poem from listener Spinach. They slept in my bed, never changed the dirty sheets. There's not enough bleach. And this poem from listener Falling Forward. I must not keep calling her schmoopy. It is making her sound dumb and droopy. If only you knew my nickname for you, you creepy, gross webcam girl groupie. That is all the Valentines we have for today. And uh, how are you going to celebrate the holiday, Sarah? What are you going to be doing? It will be, I will probably be, because it's midweek, and I suspect it's a work day, so I suspect I should be picking up school shoes, sorting out bits, and doing some washing. <laughs> it's going to be romantic, oh. but it's okay because it does mean that that gives the children's father the opportunity um, to go off and do whatever romantic antics he gets up to with his uh, with his now wife because oh. they don't they don't have to worry about picking up, you know, dealing with sloppy teams and <laughs> picking up people's shoes and all that sort of carry on. So let's hope they have a joyful time. And will she get the bar of chocolate? Quite possibly, because they've been together quite a long time now. So maybe he's gone, he's oh. moved down to the chocolate antics or with carnations. her. Well. Or carnations. She might get carnations. I don't know. Is he a flower kind of guy? I don't know. Lucky her. That's all I will say. <laughs> no tag backs. That's what I say. Like, he's yours. You won this special, special prize. I, um, um, well, I'm celebrating with my dog. I will, of course, with with my husband Paul and I don't know what we keep it pretty low key we you know exchange little things but this year I did a little um, zoom crafting with my friend who does scrapbooking and we made mini valentines and I decided that my dog Monty would hand out valentines to all his dog friends because he's he's a popular dog in the village and he has little play dates with his dog friends and he'll he'll hand out little dog biscuits and a little valentine to his friends so i think he I is think sweet just yes. make sure all dogs are equally represented because we can't have some dogs feeling a little left out like oh no of your, your school days no 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 we won't do that everybody everybody gets a valentine for monty he is sweet and pure of heart and he would never want to make anybody feel left out he is a golden retriever he loves everyone and everyone loves him so so he's going to, yes, he's going to make little heart-shaped dog biscuits and, <laughs> and hand them out. Although Monty does have two girlfriends and I don't think they know about each other. So, Oh dear, it's not looking good, but there will not be a carnation in sight. So that's something. <laughs> he would eat them if there were. So, well, on that note, thank you for, for listening to us. And we'll be here next week with more lovely cheating stories and fuckwit tales. <laughs> That wraps another episode of Tell Me How You're Mighty. You want to leave us a mighty story or a fuckwit of the week submission? Check out our new website, tellmehowyourmighty.com. That's your spelt Y-O-U-R-E. We've got all the episodes, show notes, links to our guests, and you can see the tea room where Sarah and I first met. If you enjoyed this episode, please review the podcast and follow us. Thanks. See you next week.